Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. So in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and just before we get into anything today, we had a huge turnout for our weekly tournament last Friday uh, for our Series 10 weeklies. Uh, we had 184 people uh, participating in the tournament we had like 410 people sign up so big shout out to each and every one of you for supporting the weeklies i will be throwing the weekly up for this friday this coming friday at the end of the episode so stick around for that and also if you want to just check it out on the community section of the uh, channel then you can check it out there so today getting into the team we're back and we're going to be on showdown again and we're playing a Groudon team so another one of the restricteds here we haven't touched on yet but one that i really do like in this format and for a few reasons i think you know um zashin's such a big pokemon incineroar such a big problematic pokemon as well and Groudon deals with those pretty well it does have the issue of having to deal and kind of compensate with things like intimidate but m like most physical attackers in this format it, it has that issue the uh, the other options it does have is the obviously the drought ability bringing the sun so you could see builds with things like venusaur and i do have some venusaur builds we'll touch on one of those a little bit later but the one we're kicking off with here is uh this groudon build it's a little more uh, offensive than some of the other groudons that i've been playing around with uh not as much bulk decent speed uh, stat as well 114 so can take advantage of things like scary face on thunderous um, and this was a kind of combination that I, I kind of identified at the very start of the format that I thought could be very good and um, obviously with season 9 coming to a draw we saw prankster thunderous doing very well and I felt like thunderous with scary face with taunt with eerie impulse can really shut down a lot of those big special attackers that are going to give ground on a lot of issues namely Kyogre for one but it really works handy on things like uh, shadow rider Calyrex as well uh, so thunderous a really nice partner in my opinion for groudon obviously got the ground immunity there and then you got the rock resist so there is that synergy there between the two as well nilego the next pokemon up on the list and for good reason i think it's kind of like a, a really good anti-meta pokemon at the moment it does have issues again against things like zashin but that's why i think the groudon kind of complements it very well because groudon can come in with intimidate support and deal with zashin pretty well uh, but nilego deals with lots of things that cause us issues like like rillaboom gonna cause groudon issues gonna cause type of finny issues but between the nilego and the incineroar and even the thunderous like nilego can deal with things like opposing rillaboom uh, opposing incineroar pretty well and kind of shut those options down which we're seeing a lot on uh, a lot of teams at the moment uh, the other thing that nilego deals with so well and the reason why i probably put it in here more so than dealing with rillaboom and incineroar was volcarona uh, volcarona one of those pokemon at the moment is very problematic to deal with um and you know nile guard speeds it naturally and can just one shot it and there's no worries there about having to to think about volcarona because you are boosting it uh with the sun as well with those fire type attacks so nile got a really nice pokemon here and it gives us an option of trick room speed control on the team as well so we've got the scary face on the thunderous and then we got the trick room there on the nile went with the sash rather than the power herb i feel like you get more out of nile um and you've obviously got nice nice protection again it's a little bit standard with what we're seeing but really boom and and incinero are complete staples in this format so i think you generally need them on most teams it's not necessary but and there are options to play around with other pokemon in these slots like serena could be quite nice in here but i feel like rillaboom just offers so much more to the team than what serena probably does um and then we'll move on to the rillaboom we've seen it before i've went with a knockoff set because it just gives us a little bit of a better option against shadow rider calyrex especially with the assault vest uh we get fake aggressive glide and u-turn obviously helps against um things like serena and just hit that for a little bit extra damage then we've got tapu finny it does help a bunch it gives us another terrain as well helps a bunch against against Groudon uh with Groudon I should say you know it gives us a nice switch in for those big powerful water type attacks namely Kyogre that are going to be a little bit problematic again there's nice synergy there and I think like I was thinking about going like light screen set with Haze but I'm not too worried about Xerneas if I, I can be honest because I think Haze would generally just be there for Xerneas if I needed it but between Nihiligo with its uh, poison type in with sludge bomb naturally outspeed Xerneas and then we got thunderous with eerie impulse and scary face that kind of combine 
uh, with that, if it does get its geomancy set up, I think we don't need to worry about it too much. So the calm mindset, uh, I've been having a lot of success with recently, really enjoying it. I thought I'd uh, throw it into this team to try it out. And then we're rounding off with another standard Incineroar. Bulky on the special defensive side makes sense because Groudon, you know, going to be one of those Pokemon that's probably switching in and out. And a lot of the time it's going to be Incineroar switching in. Um, so the special defensive bulk there makes a lot more sense to me so what we'll do friends the paste is down below and um, as always we'll have a couple of games with the team here we go we've got Zamazenta so that's kind of interesting with Weavile got to watch out for triple axle there they've got Tailwind Cinderace obviously going to benefit from the sun as well I think Intimidate here is like massive for us massive for us and then I don't really know how they deal with with Rilla either you know if we can drop something like the Arcanine early on um then we're in a good spot Bot. I think Nilego is pretty nice as well. We've got to watch out for the Zamazenta. So I think we've got Groudon and Rilla in this one. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, Nilego not in the best of spots. But what we could potentially do is just parting shot out onto the Zamazenta and switch into a Groudon. I think that's not a bad play because we want to kind of preserve Nilego for later on in this match if we can. Uh, Behemoth Blade coming out, not the worst. And uh, we're sitting in. A decent -ish spot here where we can probably just go for a I think yeah we'll go for the parting shot onto the Weavile this turn and then we'll protect because I, I don't want to be kind of um hampered by a triple axle here which potentially oh night slash okay so that is a different option as we get the parting shot out and uh, we can get Nile go back on the field now and pressure that Arcanine and um, switch straight back into I mean we probably want to actually precipice blades here um power gem and just precipice yeah so night slash I don't really worry about power gem nearly doing the job proc and knee. So it's a bulky it's a bulky Arcanine but again the snarl not really going to worry ground on too much Precipice Blades, of course it misses the Groudon, um, but Zamazenta are going to come back in. This is fine. What we can do is just protect Nilego. We'll switch into Incineroar. Lots of synergy here in the team as well, so you can work around things. You've got to watch out for, obviously, Substitute, potentially. I don't know what set is run on something like Zamazenta. So you see the Taunt come out from the Weavile. Um, and what we could potentially do is just switch back into Groudon here. Uh, or we could potentially just fake out the Zamazenta and just power gem. That might not be a bad option as well. They're just going to protect. Okay, let's see what this Weavile does. That's for the Night Slash, but minus whatever you are. Wow, that does not. Nowhere near as much damage. I wonder if it's a Salt Vest. Could be. Could potentially be. Uh, so, what we'll do is we'll switch into Rillaboom. Um, and I think we'll switch into Groudon as well because we can't parting shot here we could go for a flare blitz but again i don't think it's massively necessary get groudon on the field we can go for the grassy glide into weave the next turn um see behemoth blade bash coming out behemoth bash that's the one but the zamazen are not really causing too much of an issue for us at all we can go for that grassy glide here and then i mean we've got the option here where we could potentially go for a sword stance but uh do we risk it for it. Or do we just got precipice? I think we just got precipice blades. Yeah, yeah, we would have been better going for the sword stance for sure. But now, I mean, we just switch Incineroar in, can protect Groudon for a turn, and then you can kind of get a gist of how the teams kind of work in here. Uh, Zamazenta, I do like it as a Pokemon. Like, don't get me wrong, I do really like it as a Pokemon. But I, at the same time, I just think it's. It's really outclassed by Zashin. The defense boost is nowhere near as, as like beneficial as the attack boost. Um, so we'll fake out and we'll Precipice Blades. Yeah, so that should be the end of it. Close combat and they're going to drop their defense as well. And that's the thing, like you go for something like close combat here and you just kind of nullify in the attack boost, uh, the defense boost that you get. See, we're very low ladder at the minute. We'll have one more game of this team, then we'll jump on with the Venusaur variant, and uh, we'll take a look at that one. Obviously, all the teams that we feature in today's episode will be posted down below um, in a poker base, so you can check those out. Now, this is a little bit better of a matchup for us. We've got a kind of a standard uh, Tornoga team. We've got the Serena there, the Incineroar, Regieleki, and Landorus Incarnate, so... 
And Thunder is going to be very, very good here. Although, you know, the one problem is the, the Serena of everything else uh, makes it very difficult for us to kind of function. I don't tend think we'll see the Kyogre lead up top, if I'm completely honest. And a nice lead for us might be like Rillaboom Nihiligo with Thunderous Groudon in the back. That could be a possibility. Um, just leaves us a little bit short for dealing with the Landorus, but then we do have Nihiligo, Rillaboom, and the double up there could be enough to kind of deal with it anyway. Right, Rillaboom, Nihiligo, Thunderous, Groudon, let's click in and go with it. Okay, Reggie, Aleki, and Tornadus. I mean, we, pretty safe here just to go. We could Trick Room as well, you know? That would put us in a phenomenal spot. Yeah, fake out the Reggie, Aleki, let them Tailwind, and uh, we'll Trick Room catch them out this is nice if it works out let's see i don't know if they will tailwind here though thing is they might protect tornadoes and switch something like incineroar in which could make things a little bit more tricky for us but getting the trick room up means we're kind of denying them the ability to uh to to, to make the most of that tailwind <gasps> they predicted us how dare they okay so that's not ideal now they can tailwind um but yeah now they tailwind Do we double in here though? This is the thing. Do we do we sludge bomb and grassy glide this slot or do we um U-turn? I think U-turn will preserve it. It's that the other thing that we've got to think about as well is is dealing with the tornadoes. Um because as long as Serena's on the field, we can't, we can't. Yeah, they're gonna U-turn. Okay, well that's that's fair enough. Um, yeah, we can't really make the most of Thunderous, uh, Torn Thunderous, yeah, Thunderous, Tornadus is what they got. Let's not get too confused. Let's see what they bring in. Is it going to be the Kyogre? No, Regieleki. That's kind of fine, because we should, with a U-turn, be able to take it down. And that opens the door now for something like Kyogre to come in. Um, yeah. Now they have to switch Tornadus out here. They have to. I mean, they don't have to necessarily because they can. They can just. Um, they can taunt Thunderous. But we could potentially just double in on the Kyogre. Okay, they're going to do that. They're going to taunt. Um, I mean, we've got the Sash here on Nihiligo, so. They're going to they're gonna Water Spout for sure. But Thunderous should take that. Um, it's just whether or not we want to mm, get rid of the, the, the Tornadus or the Kyogre. The Kyogre is going to be the more problematic Pokemon for sure. Sludge Bomb it. Yeah, let's double up into it. I don't know. I, I don't think this will KO the Kyogre by any means. But again, at the same time, we just want damage onto it at this this at this stage and we've got to try and look at the tailwind can we deny it because i think they probably taunt nihiligo here to stop the trick room going up they either go for that or they go double up into nihiligo with water spout hurricane which which could be super bad for us they protect again they tail oh they've, they've timed out they've timed out that's really frustrating for my opponent um frustrating for us as well because you kind of would like to see. Now we double up into um, Thunderbolt and Power Gem. Yeah, my opponent's timed out completely there, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, but I mean, they're probably going to time out again. If they do, don't worry. We'll fast forward this bit. All right, well, I don't know what happened to Ivan there, but uh, he timed out pretty much every time, so we skipped to the end. We do pick up the win. It's a pretty meaningless battle other than those first few turns there. We'll have one more game with this team, and then we'll hop in and have a look at the variation that I've got with the Venusaur and try that out. What is this? There's no there's no restricted here. Um, the, the Weeping Ripper. Uh, so we got Colossal. Have fun. Always nice when you get a nice comment like that. Uh, okay, well, whew, this looks really tricky because you've got the Ferramosa, which is going to outspeed pretty much everything. The Dragable Colossal stuff is going to be a little bit annoying to deal with, of course. Um, but the Colossal can't max, so I mean, that's a, a bit of an issue for them. I think Tapu Fini is good here. I think what we'll do is lead with Cineral, Gradon. We'll bring 
do we want speed control here? Because we can pretty much nerf everything other than the, the Dragapult. We'll go Finny, we'll go Finny, we'll go Finny. And we'll go Thunderous as well. Reggie Alecki and our Krimi. I mean, we just fake out the, I mean, we can fake out the Alecki, but I mean, probably better to fake out the uh, the Alcremi. What's it? I don't really know what's going on. It's gonna go for Celebrate and it's Selectric. I love the name, you gotta love it. I'm gonna Volt Switch. Oh no, they're just reflecting. Okay, we do miss the, um, the Alecki, which is a little bit frustrating for us, of course. Um, I think what we'll do is Snarl and Precipice Blades again, and hopefully we hit, and if that Alecky is sashed, it's not. Okay, well we take down that, but Decorate coming out after the Groudon hits. So unfortunately the Alcremi not able to get that uh, combination off, which is a little bit unfortunate because you can see the value there. If you can get, you can boost your, your um, Regilecki, but you can boost something like uh, Dracovish, that's even more. Um, useful. Problem is here. I think we're gonna have to parting shot. They're gonna be able to get the. Um, they're gonna be able to get the uh, the decorate off here because we can't risk Groudon getting fishes rendered. There, there's the plus two plus two. We can parting shot out on it. The thing that we can do is get um, thunderous on the field. We can go for a scary face uh, onto it. Scary face. And do we switch into, or do we just Precipice Blades, get some damage on, and then allow Finny to kind of clean clean up? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, well, that's that kind of works. And at least we might be able to take the Fish's Rend. I don't know, plus one. Oh, no, they go after the Thunderous, which is nuts. Um, hmm. Now I think we just Thunderbolt and Precipice Blades, and that should be enough if we do manage to hit. Oh, we hit the right one, right? We hit the right one. Okay, it doesn't even coming out. And then what they got left? The Colossal? Colossal. Yeah. I like the idea of this team. Okay, it's um, Feromosa, but we can just... I mean, they're going to triple Axel us, right? They're going to triple Axel. But do we really worry with Finny in the back? You know, it doesn't really matter too much. We can just press his blades. It's the worst move in the game, I swear. It is the worst move in the game. So the Quiver Dancing... And, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, we need to scary face again. I think probably, yeah, we, we, yeah, we're all right. We can kind of keep its speed in check. We can keep its speed in check with Thunderous. They need to get rid of the Thunderous. So the Groudon's got a little bit of a free time. The screens are gone, so we should hit a little bit harder if we can hit with Groudon, which is just the most, I think one of the more frustrating things, which makes it, in my opinion, probably a little less viable than than Kyogre like I think like Kyogre is amazing um I think Groudon's amazing but the fact is that Groudon has the issue of precipice blades with that lower accuracy it does make it a little more unappealing I would say at times because I'm sure as a Groudon user yourselves if you've used it before uh it's the most frustrating thing in the world uh you can see we've missed again so we're gonna have to round up I mean how many precipice blades is that we've missed um but never mind, we do come out on top anyway. So we'll hop over now and we'll have a look at the other build. Okay, this is the other build we'll feature today and it is gonna be Stack Attacker, Indeedy Female, Groudon, Incineroar. We got the Venusaur here this time and then we got Primarina. So we got a bit more of a heavy Trick Room mod or a centered Trick Room mod rather than a passive one that we had with kind of Nihiligo. We've got really good ways to set that up between Indeedy Female with the Psychic Terrain. Obviously Redirection helps uh, Stack Attacker set that up. Safety Goggles allows us just to ignore things like Amoongus, especially when they've got Xerneas Amoongus on the field. We can really take advantage of that board position. Um, and just get rid of the Xerneas if it is an issue. Groudon again. We've went for the Sim Spread as the last one. Um, it is bulky, obviously not as much speed, uh, but um, it's got a nice attack. It can kind of function in and out of Trick Room. Um, so it can do all the jobs. Incineroar, again, same one for the same kind of reasons. We're going to be switching Groudon in and out quite a lot. 
want to cycle intimidate in and out quite a lot so i feel like the the specially defensive incinero are going to give us a little bit more stain power went with a focus sash venusaur here with the chlorophyll ability doubles the speed and sun obviously a really nice partner for groudon in general deals with water types and all those threats um sleep powder is quite a nice option to have on it don't feel like we necessarily need the earth power in this format it is nice of course you can hit zash in pretty hard you can hit things like regieleki really good because you can outspeed it with this uh, speed investment but you can also hit Regieleki and things pretty hard with things like Leaf Storm, Sludge Bomb and also Sleep Powder. Um, protect pretty mandatory here because you're going to need it with the amount of Fake Out going around and then we got Prim Arena uh, to kind of tag on the end. Um, the Ndidi pairs nicely with this as well especially if we can get it in and out to disrupt like grassy terrain which is going to be a bit of an issue for us but uh, Life Orb Prim Arena very strong option and uh, I think maybe being a little overlooked especially in a Trick Room environment so we'll have a couple of games with this team and then we'll wrap up and like i say the teams are down in the description if you're wondering and would like to test any of them out for yourselves hopefully they might just inspire some ideas got a heavy electric team up next which is uh, i guess in a way not not too much of a bad thing because we just set a trick room up um <laughs> and then kind of go from there really because we do have to worry about obviously potentially ground type attacks on on uh on the Zekron, but I mean, we can guarantee a, a Psychic Terrain up for sure. So I think we just got Stacker, Groudon, and then do we want something for Rotom Wash? Probably Venusaur. Yeah, let's go for that. Okay, there's a, there's a Terrain up. Um, <laughs> Do we just go? I think we have to follow me, Trick Room, just to be safe, just to be safe. Because I mean, the other option is we just go switch to Groudon here in Trick Room, but we don't know what... Uh, these Pokemon have in their arsenal. I think Coco goes out, to be honest, um, to get that turret back up. So we need to think about getting getting uh, Indeed off the field to get it back in to disrupt a bit later. As we see the U-turn come out from the Coco, that makes a lot of sense. But what comes in Rotom? Yeah, that makes sense as well. And Coco, I would imagine, comes back onto the field now. And Zapdos. Okay, well don't mind seeing that i mean we can at this point go for expanding force but i think getting the ground on onto the field now is quite a sensible thing because it means that we can keep our terrain for later we want to make sure that we've got rid of that electric terrain especially to make use of venusaur if the sun is up which is a little bit frustrating that we missed that rock slide there um hmm i mean we can just sword stance at this point and rock slide again or we could just double rock slide uh because they don't really have the switches, you know. We're probably not going to be able to take the Rotom down. But we don't need to worry. Like, this is the beauty, you know. You don't need to worry anymore about Rotom maxing and changing the weather. Uh, we're in a pretty nice spot. So they're going to get the, the Coco back onto the field. Rock Slide misses the Coco. Hits the Rotom. Nasty plot coming out. They're going to try and stall out these Trick Room turns. But we're doing decent-ish damage. Throughout. Um, right. I think we just rock slide, rock slide again, to be honest. I mean, the Rotom probably protects, but they've got to get through two turns of Trick Room, which I don't know if they're going to be able to do. Yeah, as long as this rock slide hits. Ooh, maybe not. Ooh, we lose the stack, we lose our Trick Room, but we got one more turn. And um, I think... I think we bring in... Do we bring in Venusaur now? Yeah, let's bring in Venusaur. Because then we got the terrain, we can switch back in this next turn. And I don't know how they beat Groudon, to be honest. So yeah, let's just go... I think they're going to Volt Switch, to be honest. Let's Rock Slide and Protect. Uh, they're going to U-turn. Okay, Groudon takes that. Pretty nice. It's super frustrating that we keep missing. We keep missing. Which is really frustrating, but we can get rid of the Rotom now, the the, the Tailwind gone. Um, I think we just Precipice Blades, to be honest, and just go for Sludge Bomb into the Rotom. And unless we see like Electro Web here and a Protect on the Rotom, like, I like this team a lot. I think my opponents don't like Super... Wow, Brave Bird. Physical Coco. But yeah, I think we've got this. Hopefully, you know that the Groudon is pretty low health. Uh, and we're going to have to switch it out now to Indeedy to get it back onto the field. So we've got that chlorophyll boost. But I mean, other than that, we're kind of we're kind of all right. So, um, and the Venusaur Sash at the same time. We've got a little bit of 
security there it does give us a few extra options obviously having the venusaur over something like rillaboom which is quite nice rising voltage coming out not going to be enough and then dd going down get that terrain up which is always useful um can just go for the sludge bomb and precipice blades precipice blades sludge bomb again you got to worry about something like uh electro web here of course but yeah i mean just not not doing enough at all and uh, very good game to my opponent really inventive team really love it okay we'll have one more with the team then we'll wrap up and um hopefully we can see a little bit more it's nice to play something or see if we can play something a little bit more standard the last team was great and all but um it's you know the, the idea of this team is to kind of play things a little bit more standard in the format so you can see how to approach certain matchups this is a little bit closer i guess with a and it's an interesting team of course with ninjask indeedy uh, Dracovish, Rillaboom, and Incineroar. So you got the double fake out, you got the Intimidate support, um, redirection as well, and then speed boost Ninjask, which I'm not entirely sure what it will be doing, but it's an interesting Pokemon nonetheless. Uh, Intimidate support going to be a bit of an issue. I think if we could potentially get um, a a Trick Room up here, we'd be in a, a, a great position. So I think we'll go Stacker, Stacker. Did we go Stacker, DD? I really want, the thing is, I think I need to go Stacker, Incineroar, Groudon, Primarina, because I think Primarina is going to be really, really useful here. Um, okay, it's not ideal. Not ideal in the slightest. I think what we'll have to do is parting shot out onto the Dracovish. I think they go after the Stacker to stop the Trick Room, if I'm completely honest. If they go after the Incin, then fair play, but they haven't. They've went after the Stack Attacker, and then we can get, um, hmm. Can't get, Pr well, we could bring Primarina onto the field. I think we can get Groudon onto the field. Um, get the Sun up, and then I think what we'll do is we'll Trick Room, and we'll bring Incineroar back onto the field then, because then we put the Dragovish down to minus three, and that will... I think definitely ensure that Stack Attacker will be able to take this help in hand boosted Vicious Rend, which we'll see. Yeah, I mean, we take that pretty well. Pretty well. I mean, we take that really well. And uh, now we can just Rock Slide. Um, do we go after the Indeedy here? I think we need to preserve Incineroar. That's the big take for us, you know? Uh, if we parting shot now uh, onto the Dracovish. Okay, Rillaboom coming in. That's fine. Uh, follow me. And the Rock Slide, you can't even follow me. Come on, Stacks. Right, we'll bring Groudon back onto the field now, because then we can just switch straight into Incineroar. Um, many turns have we got left? We just bring Incineroar in here, and I think... Hmm, no. I think what we'll do is Rock Slide and bring Incineroar back in here. I think we preserve Groudon for a little bit later because I think once that sun's gone, Grassy Glide, we do take that pretty well. Stax is just a monster. And yeah, now we're in a, a really good spot where we can fake out the boom. Yeah, we'll just fake it out. Is it gonna protect? Yeah, double protect, that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll rock slide and we will parting shot out onto DD so we can get a sun back up. Okay, it's Ashen coming out, which is fine. Get a bit of damage onto that DD. If all of our like honestly, if all of our rock slides had hit, I think the DD would be gone now. So we'll get Groudon back in. Um we'll then we can then just press this blades and switch into Incineroar. And then Precipice Blades. And that may be enough to get the Zash in. Up in hand. Sacred Sword. Oof. Losing Incineroar here is not ideal. But if you get the return for the Zash in, it's kind of not as bad. Uh, grassy Terrain going to leave a field which isn't good. Because now we've got Rillaboom to contend with. Which is not ideal. Mm. Do we try and go for the Trick Room? I think we... I think they go after the stacker. I think they have to go after the stack attacker, to be honest. Because if the trick room goes up, then they're, they're in a really bad spot, right? So we could potentially use this to rock slide here. 
Yeah, I think they have to. No, they go after Groudon. Oh dear, and they get the crit, which is awful. Um, hmm. Yeah, now we are in trouble. Now we are. We we just lose this now. Um, we can Moonblast. I mean, we don't lose it if they don't go after the Prim, but they go after the Stacks. Well, we do take it. Okay, so a little bit of a misconception from our end that Stacker couldn't take that. And Dracovish left, so I was fully expecting. But this is why Stack Attacker is so good, I guess. You know, um... And then we, we get the win, get the win, get the gyro ball off, and there we go. So, teams, as I say, we've got two today. We've got this one here, which is the Stack Attacker Primarina. I really like this personally, so if you do try it out, definitely let me know. And then the one that we started the episode off is the Ground on Thunderous Nihiligo one. Again, a real favorite of mine. I think at the minute, I don't want to put it like a final Ground on team out there. I'm like, this is the definitive Ground on team that you should use in the format. Not that I ever would, but I think I'm playing around a lot with ground on at the minute and i do really like it in these kind of builds and i'm not as keen on like the porygon 2 build where you got that dedicated kind of trick room mod because i don't know i feel like it limits you a little bit i like the kind of passive um trick room here and stack attacker again is a bit different because i think stack attacker is one of those pokemon at the moment in this format where you can literally win a game with just stack attacker if you're in the right conditions you get the trick room up you can win out with just stack attacker against even like three pokemon whereas p2 is not essentially going to really be able to do that um and it is a bit more kind of taunt bait than stack attacker is i don't know there's arguments for both, but that's just my two takes. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know down in the comment section below what Pokemon you'd like to see featured this week. We've had a lot of comments, obviously, with uh, things like ho -Oh and uh, Pokemon like that. But um, we will be getting around to those. If you've got particular Pokemon that you'd like to see featured, then definitely let me know. And then before we end up, we will get on to the tour that will be happening this Friday, the 30th, 8 p.m. UTC. I'll put the code up on the screen now for you so you can uh, join that if you'd like to it's a massive hit last week and i really hope if you did play you enjoyed it and you got something out of it we'll be playing again this friday we'll be streaming it here on youtube so do come along and join the stream if you are playing it was a lot of fun hanging out with everyone last friday and uh, we had a pretty good record we kind of we finished early because i didn't want to continue on and obviously we had a prize last week for diamond pearl uh, the new one coming out the pre-order which is just a little thanks from me to uh, say thank you for the support that you're giving us and um this week's a be just as good fun um we went 9-2 last week so hopefully we can try and uh improve on that this week going forward anyway friends have a great one thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you all for another episode here on the channel very soon so until then take care and bye bye